Hello everybody, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time visiting me. I have already lit a little incense. Uh, we're gonna jump in. I was stumbling all over my words, so I just started over. This is what we're doing today. Uh, I have a ton of decks to talk about with you and to share with you, so this is definitely going to be a long one. Have a beverage, have a snack, you know the drill, right? Make sure you're cozy uh, or that you're prepped for a nice long video. I mean, I don't know why I give you the warning. By now, you just know my videos are gonna be long, but longer now that I have nothing stopping me from making really long videos. My camera doesn't cut me off. It's like a virtual playground over here, a video making. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. I think what I'm gonna do is start off talking about the decks that came in because of Don Michelle or because of visiting Don Michelle. Uh, I feel like that's a good place to start. So why don't I just jump in right there? The first deck is a repurchase. Um, I have, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I do know what to say, but I had this and it was such a bratty deck, which I suppose makes sense. This is the Beautiful Creatures Tarot. This is the one that's been compiled by Jay Rivera with artwork by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. Um, I had feels about this the first time I had it. I thought it was really good, but I, I'm, I'm sure you can find old videos where I talked about it actually. So if you really wanna know what my, my thoughts were, um, go check those out. But here's the situation. Dawn and I think it started with Marlena. So Marlena, she got this deck and was talking about it. And then I think Dawn got the deck and was talking about it. And y'all, I am very impressionable. Okay, that's probably the best, the best way to put it. I'm very impressionable. But I was watching them play with this and I was like, you know what, I think I might miss it. Uh, I don't know that I really miss this purple gilding because while it's gorgeous, uh, my copy of this, the first copy I had, it chipped so bad and so fast. But Dawn has a copy of this that I got my hands on that she uh, trimmed and just enough to take the gilding off and it just looks beautiful. I will say I really love the keywords in this version. I don't know why, I really enjoy it. I think because it's curated art, the keyword does help to sort of hone in on the message of the card or the meaning of the card. And I feel like I agreed with a lot of these keywords. In fact, yeah, I feel like I agreed with most of them. And I also really enjoyed the quartz. Where are they? Are they in the back? Are they all in the back? No, just some of them. See, some of these are still stuck together. Um, I, I liked the quartz because each court card had a representation of a particular zodiac sign, which I really appreciated. So the Knight of Pentacles here is Virgo. The Queen of Swords is Libra. The King of Cups is Scorpio. I really liked that aspect of the quartz. I feel like I remember this being one of the things I really, really liked about it. Yeah, so here we have Page of Swords, Page of Cups. Why don't I see the sign here? I feel like I see, oh, that's right, because the pages are just their entire suit. That's right, so it's the Knight, Queen, and King that are associated with specific, yeah. So here the Knight of Cups is Pisces. Uh, here the Knight of Swords is Aquarius. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Capricorn, it took me a second, oh my gosh. Sagittarius, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like I really, really liked that about this. I'm tempted to do the same trim that Dawn did, but I've been really lazy about trims lately, so we shall see. But I think I really want to uh, get this purple gilding off. On the other hand, I might just work with it for a while, and then once the gilding starts to annoy me, I might switch over then. Oh, now I've gotta get it back in the box. But anyways, I don't remember how I felt about the guidebook. I don't know, we'll see. I'm a big fan of Jasmine Gra big Beckett Griffith's artwork. And for a while I was working with Peekaboo Rose's um, Notor Notorious JBG, which I still heartily recommend. I think that's a really, really wonderful JBG, Jasmine, Beck Jasmine Beckett Griffith deck. I think she did an incredible job on curating the art, but I, I kind of just missed this one. So this is where I'm at now the beautiful creatures hero came back into my collection and getting my hands on it at Don Michelle's was definitely part of the little push to decide to just go ahead and scoop it up. So I did. Now this one is entirely Don Michelle's fault. The Heavenly Bloom Tarot. I know that I talked about this in a hot takes and was like, I don't need this. What am I talking about? Uh, but it's so fun and it's so pretty. Uh, here we have some more colorful gilding. Clearly I have a thing for colorful gilding, but um, Don Michelle called this her Final Fantasy deck, and I love Final Fantasy. Look at these backings. This is a US Games, but it's shiny, and it's also really tall. Like, you can see how kind of tall and narrow it is. Do I have a standard tarot size? This is maybe around standard tarot size, and you can really see how much taller. Let's do it this way so you can see. Oh, this Fortuna tarot is so pretty. But anyways, you can see how much taller it sticks out. So it's tall and narrow. The shape is fun, for sure. I mean, not gonna lie, it's, it's fun. The gilding is like this really pretty kind of rose colored pink, not that, not a really bright um, hot pink, 
but this is very much a this is so much like Final Fantasy or um, a much prettified a prettified version of World of Warcraft. It's really beautiful. I cannot wait to play with this, but this is definitely a self indulgent deck. I feel like I got this because it reminds me of all the role playing games I enjoy playing. And I love that. I love that world. I don't really have any fantasy art decks or decks that I would class as fantasy art decks. I suppose my 78 tarot uh, mythical is fantasy art, but this just, there's something about the specific quality. I love this four of wands so much. Um, and I love this five of wands so much. There's a quality to this art that just takes me someplace else. And I really, really love that. I think it's gorgeous. There's some story actually built into this deck, which excites me. It talks about different tribes or uh, I don't know if tribes, clans or something like that, that is present in each suit. So you can really sort of get to know this world if you'd like. I just find this really enchanting and beautiful. Like, I'm sorry for the glare, but like, I just, oh, it's so pretty. So I, when I held this in my hands and flipped through it at Don Michelle's, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm buying that. Like it's mass market. It's really beautiful. I just, I just wanted it. And now I've got to find a bag for it. Uh, thankfully, I'm pretty sure. Let's just test that. I have one of Peggy's standard bags um, here with a different deck in it. Let's just see if it'll fit in a Peggy standard bag. I think it will. Oh yeah, it fits beautifully in Peggy's standard bag. Oh good. So I can just snag a standard bag that matches this coloration from her stash slash take it off the Etsy shop <laughs> and uh, give my give my my deck a home. Let me just put that deck back. Okay, but this is just really pretty. I don't regret this at all. This is so, such a fun purchase and um, I'm really excited to play around with this. I, yeah, I'm super enchanted by it. This was totally a uh, taking a chance on it deck. So when I was in Portland, Dawn and I went to her local Barnes and Noble and we got, uh, talking with Trish who works at Barnes and Noble. I just had a really, really great time uh, finding this deck and um, Trish said I had anti hauled it and didn't like it or um, hot take talked about it and didn't like it or something. I believe her, but I purchased it anyways because I was super curious about it. Everything was sealed at Barnes and Noble. I couldn't really, I just, I don't know. Maybe I just felt like buying something that day. I don't know, but I got it out of its box and I'm really excited about this. I think this is by the same publisher that did um, the Kawaii Tarot. Like this feels like the exact same packaging um same sort of insert situation same kind of weird um flip top box but like this weird it's i don't really like this style of box it's very awkward to me because it's like top i just don't like it okay i don't like it anyway what really excites me about this deck is that this feels that's what the backing looks like this deck feels like this is another mass market i said that already because i got it at barnes and noble um this feels like it's very much focused in on tech. Like here's our magician at a computer and you get these like lines of like code, almost like numbers. There's our high priestess doing tarot and stuff. It feels very modern, very social media, pop culture-y, but in a really fun, a fun way. Like, look at this. Look at how cute that lover's card is. The chariot. Um, I really especially love this judgment card and the guidebook has little statements like I it's really memorable for this one I, I apologize to my members because they've already heard me babble about this but in the judgment card um talks about not reading the comments like it literally says don't read the comments in the guidebook there is a flaw um in my guidebook where uh some of the cups cards are missing let's see which one is missing yeah, so we go ace, two, five, six. So the uh, three and four of cups is missing from the guidebooks, so just be aware. I just thought this was a really fun little modern deck. And this, the artwork just really jived. So I'm excited to play with this a little bit. This one really caught my attention. And the funny thing is, is that I was recently complaining about a modern deck that felt too young, but I didn't really think about age with this one just because it felt like, check out the Three of Swords. It felt very social media slash tech focused and modern like look at the ten of swords right it feels like it's like our lives online is sort of um, a big part of how this one is set up and I liked that I liked the idea that I could focus in on the sort of modern social media situation with these like little text bubbles and stuff I just I really liked it so it's an inexpensive little deck. How much was this? Does it say? Does it have a cover price? Yeah, $24.99 US, $18.99 UK, $32.99 Canadian is the list price. Uh, but I flipped through this a bunch. I haven't done any readings with it yet. Hello? Can you open? There we go. I flipped through it a bunch. 
and I'm gonna do some playing with it. I think this would be a fun one to use for client readings. I'll probably just put it in a bag without this awkward box though, because the box is really annoying me. <laughs> Super happy I picked it up though. And then the other one that I picked up entirely because of Don Michelle is the Energetics of Color. Oh my gosh. So I've talked about this one already a bit in my this or that because this is sort of possibly going to be taking the place of my Color Mage Oracle. I This one was not on my radar at all. I don't think I knew about it or something. Maybe it just never grabbed my attention for any reason but really nice production quality. I kind of wish the box and the deck and everything all kind of fit instead of it being sort of like oversized like this. But, cause I think I'll have to put this, let's just do another test. I think I'll have to put this in a large, I should probably just keep this Peggy bag out. I think I have to put this in a large Peggy bag, but we'll see. Oh, well it technically, okay. So it, it slides in, but I don't really like my bags to necessarily be that um, well fitted, but I mean, it's possible. Yeah, I, I don't want it to be that well fitted. I don't like having to do that to get my bag out or my box out. And I don't want to keep it in there without the box because then the cards or the book might bend around the cards. And I don't like that. So I'll just keep this off to the side because I'll probably reference it again. Um, but anyways, it's standard tarot size ish. Let's just see my Fortuna tarot. I don't know if this is standard tarot, but it's pretty close, I think. Yeah, these are pretty close. I would say of the two, this actually feels a little more standard. But they're pretty, they're pretty similar. It's a little bit narrower and a little bit taller than the Fortuna Tarot as a reference. Um, what I love about this, so it's got that really nice antique or matte gold. Um, so it's a little bit shimmery, but it's, um, it's not that mirror shine style of gilding. And it's a matte cardstock. It's got that smooth kind of buttery feel to it, but it is pretty thick. And there are 77 cards in this, but it's a color themed, Oracle deck, Energetics of Color, obviously. It's a color themed Oracle deck, but for every color you get a keyword on this bottom border, you get the name of the color, and then there's a little, okay, the white's a bad example. There's a little semicircle showing you the color right there so that you can see it. So you can work with this as a color deck in all the ways that you would normally work with color energy or color magic, etc. But then you also get this beautiful artwork. And I feel like this would pair well with a lot of like more, obviously it would pair well with any deck with this style. So it would obviously go well with say the Star Child or Moon Child. Um, the uh, Ocean Dreams Oracle would probably look really nice next to this, maybe. That one might be a little bit too similar in color tone to match nicely. But I just, I really like this. I really like this. So I'm excited to play with this and see how this works for me as a good sort of all rounder sort of Oracle. We'll see though, because, because there is an art style on it that may actually limit its use. I don't know until I'm into it. So we'll be, I'll be doing some work with this and I will report back once I have, but for now I'm really excited. And I also really like the guidebook. So you get, um, it's full color. You get obviously the, the color image of the card and the color dot over here on the right, but then you get a physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, interpretation and you also get an affirmation at the bottom of every card which i think is really nice and then of course you have a little write-up at the top as well so i really really enjoy the way that this is set up and i'm super excited to get to know it so that is the energetics of color which i got because dawn had it and i was slipping through it and i was like i just fell totally in love i ordered it while i was still out of town actually i think this is the last one <laughs> famous last words. I think this is the last one I got um, while I was down there. And this is the Sovereign Oracle by Teresa Pridemore. This is such a cute little deck. This is made by a Portland local and it's called the Sovereign Oracle 93 card Oracle deck with words and prompts to guide creative endeavors. Uh, it's really inexpensive. It's a little mini guy and it's list price is $19.95 US. So I'm a, a bit of a, what was the word somebody commented and told me what it was? Like a Lex, Lex, Oh no, I've forgotten. It starts with Lex or Bibliophile. I don't know. I like words. That's the punchline. Uh, it does come with a couple little spreads, a creative project spread and a business spread. But then what you get, let me just bring this up so you can see it well, is you get cards with a word and then three little write-ups, like three little possible meanings could be combined. Oh, it came out of focus. Sorry, that was me moving it. Sorry. Um, so you can look at each individual meaning or you can combine them lots of little cards. Like I said, there's 93. It's so small that it might be really awkward to shuffle. I haven't shuffled it yet. So I'll shuffle it after this, after I just sort of show you some of the cards. 
I could zoom in. I suppose that would be easier than holding them up, but really lovely little deck. And again, very affordable. I don't think I'm going to be able to riffle it. Let's see if I can. Oh no, it's too thick. It's too many cards. So this is one where I definitely would have to... Oh, they're, they're flying out. What flew out? Order. That's funny. Find a drawer and organize it, literally or metaphorically. Take com take command and aim for your desired result or and or find the right sequence. Be careful of perfectionism. So yeah. Um, so yeah, this is one that I would definitely have to shuffle. I feel like decks like this would make really good little clarifiers. I have also backed a word deck called, uh, oh gosh, Divine Definer or something like that, that I'm really excited about that is also word-based, but that one's based more on definitions. I'm just really stoked about this little guy. They really like to jump out. When we have Paradox and Permission. So I'm gonna have to spend some time shuffling this little dude. Um, but then I feel like it would just be such a great one for pulling, a, yeah, pulling a little clarifier, trust. And, yeah, why not? Gifts. Are some of them upside down? I don't know. Anyway, I'm just playing now. <laughs> just We're just playing, that's what we do. That's what we do in recent deck roundup, we just play. So anyways, this is a fun little one and it was in their like little mini decks display. I almost picked up the travel edition of the Osho Zen Tarot because that's such an oldie and goodie, but then I realized my very well-worn original copy, I've already trimmed it down to be more or less, um, travel size so I don't really need to do that but yeah that's the little sovereign oracle and it's so cute oh I should probably show it next to a uh next to that fortuna tarot so you can see the size of it so it's it's little you can see it's quite little it's about a quarter the size of the fortuna tarot give or take yeah super cute so the next thing I want to show was sent to me very generously as a gift, and I'm so stoked. So I actually, I think I anti-hauled this deck, uh, and I spoke about, this is the Stunning Tarot uh, by Yonasa Yaus, the uh, fourth edition, and it's signed on the back there on the box. This is one of those decks that's been intriguing me for a very long time, not necessarily this edition, but just this deck in general. But I sort of talked myself out of it because I'd already missed out, to be fair, because the pre-order had already ended, um, or the purchase period had already ended. But I also have the Terrible Holy Spectrum that I felt like kind of scratched the itch for this deck. But a very generous soul reached out and offered to send this copy to me. I do think it's interesting how I have not used this at all, but it's already got some like little dings on it. And I've literally just pulled it out of the box once to check it. I'm like, why though? <laughs> anyway. But I love this shape. I don't know. We'll see after I look, look through it a little bit if I can shuffle it. But as with everything else I'm showing, and I'm a little late in giving this announcement, but uh, what I like to do is show the decks that have come in. And if there's something you really want to see a walkthrough of, like a full detailed card by card, me telling you my impressions, um, drop that in the comments down below. Either any of the decks that I've shown already, any of the decks that I'm about to show. Some of these I'll want to do walkthroughs probably for myself anyways. I think this is going to be one of them, but it can't hurt to know what you all are interested in seeing because then I can prioritize what I'm going to film first, that sort of thing. So please let me know what you're most interested in seeing a walkthrough of. But I'm really excited to have this in my hands. I, when it arrived, I took it out and I kind of looked at it a little bit. And I'm really excited about it, more than I thought I would be, to be completely fair. Like, I, I knew I would enjoy getting a chance to get to know it and just to try, but I was really kind of enchanted looking at it. I love this Hermit card with the footprints so much, so much. So I'm really, I'm really, I'm really, really stoked. I love uh, this Death card as well. I love it. It's so powerful. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of cards in here that I'm really drawn to. And surprisingly, I'm not, I don't seem to be bothered by the limited color palette. There must be something about me lately because I feel like this is one area where my tastes have been really evolving because I used to be really turned off by limited color palettes. And I think it was that dang Penelope's tarot, which is going to be coming out, out as the Valorious tarot by Samantha West or Sam West, that deck was my first real love when it comes to limited color palette, I think, outside of like the occasional black and white that surprised me. But anyways, all these reds and purples, I don't know, but this is the same kind of color tones as what was in the Buffy Tarot. So I wonder if that's part of it. I will say my favorite suit is by far the wands. I love how witchy and magical and empowered they feel. They're really strong. 
It's a really, really strong suit. I think the suit I'm the least excited about currently, but I haven't taken any time to get to know it yet, is the coin suit. Um, it's got a real Egyptian feel, which I'm not a, I'm not against at all. This must be um, the sky goddess Newt, the starry sky. That must be who that is. But anyways, um, but again, it feels very empowering. There's something about this deck that feels very powerful. So I'm, I'm excited to get to know it, but yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't, it's almost like the Egyptian stuff felt out of place for me for some reason, but I don't think that it is. I think it's just, just the way that this goes, but we have sort of this, if you look at it, it's almost this like sort of Middle Eastern feeling to, or Far East feeling to the swords. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, oh no, wait, 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 wait. Middle Eastern, Far East feeling to the cups. That's right. And then the swords, these feel, these feel watery, which is very interesting. It's like all mer people. I wonder if that's meant to be about the little mermaid. That's very interesting. Like the Hans Christian Andersen little mermaid. And then of course we get this very Celtic pagany kind of vibe to the wands. And then this Egyptian vibe to the pentacles or coins. I'd really like to learn more about the folklore. I, I heard somebody say that this is associated with fol folklore in some way. Yeah, I don't like those dings on my fool card, and I don't know what's doing that. I think it might be the tuck box situation. I'm going to put it in this way, gently. I wonder if that's what it is. It's the dang tuck box. I just, there's, y'all, I have feelings about tuck boxes because they do this, right? That you kind of try to get your cards back in. And what I like to do is pull a little section out. Make sure everybody gets in there and then, oh, I don't know if I showed, but I pull like the, I let the back and the front drop down and then I slide and then it seems to go in there much nicer. But yeah, you can see the little dings and I'm sure that's from putting it back in the box. But anyway, I'm really grateful. <laughs> it's upside down. I'm really, really, really grateful that this came into my hands. I don't think this is one I would have ever purchased on my own, um, but, when, but getting it in and getting a chance to look at it and touch it and flip through the cards, I'm really stoked about this. So I think this is gonna slot in really nicely to my practice. But I think what I was saying, and I may have interrupted myself, is that I'm really looking forward to seeing or learning more. There's no guidebook or anything. I don't even think there's a PDF guidebook for this one, but I'd really like to learn more about the if it's intentional, the folkloric uh, associations with the suits. I think that'd be really neat. These next two were also gifted to me by uh, Jillian Wild, who is the sweetest. So these are her previous decks that she kickstarted. So right now she's got the Familiar's Way box set up on Kickstarter. Well, that Kickstarter will be over. I think the time I'm filming, it's got a day or so left. But uh, anyways, these were her last projects. So Pixie Pop Tarot was a collaboration between uh, Jillian and, um, oh gosh, I forget her name, the creator of the Rebel deck. They did this project together. So they recolored, they took the 1909. Um, I hate it when this, okay, I'm going to use a knife. Just don't be alarmed. It's fine. It's just my athame. And it sometimes just serves a more practical purpose. That's all. Anyway, Jillian, uh, and her friend put this together. It's a recoloration of the 1909 RWS, but it's in a different shape. So it's again, kind of skinnier and let me just show it next to the, we're just going to keep going with the same comparative card here with the Fortuna Tarot. Here we go. So you can see it's smaller. It's like a little pocket, little pocket edition, right? So it's got a very simple back with an infinity design on the back. I find, I've already shuffled to play with this, as you can see, I really like that they have adjusted the colors and made this much more accessible and representative of more people. I think that's really great. The line work feels very, very thick on this edition, and that just could be the nature of the 1909. I'm not an RWS aficionado at all as far as like what the artwork is supposed to look like. Uh, really delicate details like line work, but I do notice it sometimes. And I think when we don't see the thicker line work is when it's been cleaned up in some way or like redone. I don't know. But I always really notice it in the Ace of Cups, excuse me, the Eight of Cups. I always really notice it in the Eight of Cups. Just some of the line work ends up looking really chunky. But I really love, love the colors in the back of this Nine of Pentacles so much. I really do like the coloring and I like how small and kind of, it feels like an in-between, it doesn't feel like a pocket deck, but it doesn't feel full size. So it feels really easy to handle. That's really pretty. Now I don't read with the RWS a lot, but that one's upset. Oh, that's right. Cause there's a, uh, a visionary, like a bonus card, the visionary that's Pamela Coleman Smith. And then there's a Pamela Coleman Smith separate, uh, altar card that has a little bit of information. 
Uh, it says, this deck is for the visionaries, the dreamers, the seekers, the lovers, and the mystics. This separate card is a gift as a thank you for supporting indie deck creators. Stay true to your vision. And uh, there's a quote, I believe, from Pixie. Yes. Learn from everything, see everything, and above all, feel everything. Find eyes within, look for the door into the unknown country. And then it says pixie. So that's a pixie quote. So that's kind of neat. So you have the actual pixie card that you can shuffle into your deck, but then you also have the uh, little altar card as well. So that's kind of a sweet addition. I really want to shuffle this. You can see, oh, and it's got um, black painted edges as well. So it's like uh, got a bit of sheen to it, but it is not a gilding. Yeah, this shuffles so nicely. And if you have smaller hands, especially, but you don't want to go right down to a mini. This seems like such a nice compromise. Did I already show the compare? I think I did, but I'm going to do it again because I can't remember now. Um, yeah, so that's it compared to the Fortuna Tarot as an example. So it's a really, really nice little size. I think this would be such a great deck to take to a shop or take on the go. Yeah, really, really lovely. And it's a nice matte, silky matte cardstock. So let me just pop these cards on the front like that. And then there is a guidebook. I have not dug into the guidebook at all, but it has the little page tabbing, like so you can easily find what suit and then go to the write-up. Oh, this is neat. For the court cards, there's a write-up and then there's a section called personality traits, which is fun. And there's some information here about the ombre colors and their meanings that are put in the, in the cards. Some information about tarot, about the minors. So that's cool. So this is Pixie Tarot Key, it says. Pixie Tarot Key Guidebook by Pixie Style Divination. So that's fun. So that is the Pixie Pop Tarot, which was cool. I'm so excited to have it in my hands. And then the other deck that was part of the same Kickstarter campaign that Jillian did was the Mystic Woodlands Charmed Playing Card, Tarot Infused Charmed Playing Cards. I am really getting interested in possibly doing some tarot, uh, not tarot card, playing card divination. And this has got a little bit of tarot, like exactly as it's worded. It's got a little bit of tarot infused in it. So it's on a really nice uh, playing card style card stock. It literally feels like a nice quality deck of playing cards. Oh, I feel like, what has happened here? Oh yes. Okay. That's right. There's some extra stuff in here. So you have some how to use the deck. There's some information on the animal companions that sort of are central to each suit. So you have owl for the spades or the swords, deer for the diamonds or the coins, pentacles, um, fox for the clubs or wands, and rabbit for the heart, heart or cups. And these have, these have an almost um, Alice in Wonderland kind of vibe to them. So you have these really glossy cards that have a uh, spot gloss treated card. And then on the back, you get your little interpretations. And these feel much more like, I would say, tarot. I don't even know what, what's a true or correct playing card interpretation, but these feel infused uh, or aligned with tarot meanings from what I remember from quick flip throughs. And then the actual pip cards themselves, they're just really lovely. You have these gorgeous ornate wands and you've got the wand to remind you that clubs is wands. And then for the face cards, you have these lovely fox, this fox family. So you have the jack, the queen, and the king. There's no major arcana or anything like that. And then for the cups, you have these sweet stylized little cups. Again, they feel very Alice in Wonderland to me. And then you have the rabbit, rabbit family for the page, or excuse me, for the jack, queen, and king. And then for the swords, you have these swords piercing roses. And then you have the owl family, jack, queen, and king. And again, you have this sword to remind you that this is spades, but it's also swords. And then the pentacles, same thing. And then you have the deer or elk. And then you have Mystic Woodland in the back here. I'm gonna put these up front with these extra card stuff. So I feel like you could use this as like a regular uh, 52 card deck, like a regular playing card deck. But if you wanted to use this for divination, you could just tie back into the tarot meanings by being like, oh, that's the five of cups. And if you look, how interesting, right? Three are upright, two are upside down right? So you get that little hint every once in a while that it's got that bit of tarot infused into it. So yeah, I just, I think this is really fun. I don't know that I'll be using this a lot until I feel like I want to get more into playing card stuff, but I'm really impressed by the quality and I just love Jillian's stuff. I mean, I've made no bones about the fact that I do. So this is really sweet. Mystic Woodlands tarot infused charmed playing cards. So those came in, she brought those by for me, which was really sweet. 
So I finally got off the fence and got Stephen Bright's uh, Spirit Within Tarot. This has been out for a long time. I, this was his first tarot, I believe, or first deck even. Um, and this is a Red Feather, Shipper Red Feather publication, which their cardstock is not like my favorite. But when did this come out? I think it's been out, yeah, 2017. I thought so, it's been out forever. I've talked about this deck off and on throughout the years <laughs> and I just needed to get it. I just, it was just, call it curiosity, but also I really wanted a deck that felt a little more masculine. I don't love, look at this. I don't love how the deck seems like it was made in two separate piles and then just like dropped in there. I'm hoping that will shuffle out, but it's kind of gapped in spots. This can also be a consequence of sitting in the box for a really long time and not um, being opened. So that could have been what it was. But anyways, if you have not seen The Spirit Within, this is a really lovely silhouette-based silhouette based deck, but it has a very distinctly masculine and modern feeling. So there's a lot more men in this deck or men's seemingly men's or masculine bodies present as you flip through the cards. But I wanted something like that in my collection. I do often try to think about, I have lots of modern decks, but my modern decks, I don't know, they, they tend to be weighted a little bit more towards women. And I wanted one that wasn't, right? I don't know. We'll see. I love the color coding as well. The wand suit, as you can see, has got this burnt orange coloration. And then when we get into the cup suit, it's got this beautiful like periwinkle blue. Um, but look, the nine of cups is almost never, well, I guess I shouldn't say in the RWS, it actually is a dude. I just, I really like these. I think the, the illustration style is really nice. I like the way the fonts are done. It feels relatable. And because they're all silhouettes, I feel like it's easier for, for somebody to see themselves in this deck. Not entirely. I don't think it's perfect by any stretch. I love that you can see a little bit of the blood dripping from the wound in the three of swords. I think the meaning comes through very clearly. It's very much an RWS based deck. Swords have this like yellowy color. And then we get into the pentacles, which are this like kind of murky olive green for the most part with hints of this blue. But yeah, that is the spirit within. Again, I've kind of always wanted to give this deck a try. And I'm really excited to have it in hand. So I'll be playing with this. I really, you know what? I need to shuffle it. I can't with the split deck thing. It's just driving me crazy. So I will say Schiffer's decks tend to feel a little bit, they're gloss treatment that they use or whatever printer they use it's like the gloss is a little sticky and grippy feeling um but i will say that my previous my the last deck i had that came in the same kind of packaging was the guardian tarot which i had for a very long time i ended up rehoming it eventually but i had it for a really long time it held up really nicely so i feel like this cardstock is going to hold up just fine but yeah so you can see a little bit of that gapping remains but it's a little better now that i've shuffled it together so I'm going to just pop that back in the box. There's a little bit of sticky where I peeled those labels. The, there was like these little label seals on the side holding the box closed when I got it in. And this little ribbon wants to fold out. So I've got to force it back in to the box. I may even trim those ribbons off, honestly. I may just trim them off. <laughs> but anyways, that is the Spirit Within Tarot by Stephen Bright. I'm really glad to finally have this in my collection and to be able to reach for it. I'll have to find a good bag for this again where's my okay hold on where's my little standard bag i'm sure it's going to be fine oh yeah it'll be fine in a standard yeah standard bag so uh looks like i'm probably going to want something maybe purple and black to match this one yeah there's a little sticky there from the label but i'll deal with that later anyway stoked about that i have a very dangerous stack of decks piled next to me that i'm really concerned are going to fall over I also ordered and finally received the Tree Whisper Oracle, the Secret Garden Edition by Maggie Black. Now she does planned pre-orders. So she, if you are interested in any of the editions of the Tree Whisper Oracle, there's this one and then there's the original, which is the more fall and winter. I believe this is more spring, summer. This is such a unique deck. And I'd already ordered it uh, when I went down to visit Dawn, but she had a copy of it and I just, getting my hands on it, I was so confident I'd made a good decision. I really like the size of these, but they are large. So here's my Fortuna Tarot again, and you can see how much different they are in sizes. Like it's quite tall and I feel like I have pretty big hands. Um, this cardstock feels really, really nice. It feels like a thick, smooth cardstock. Um, there's something really special about this deck and I'm just really excited to have it in my hands. 
But in any case, the Tree Whisper Oracle, if you haven't seen this before, uh, this, it says, walk slowly, listen softly. The idea behind this one, and this, again, this Secret Garden Edition is like spring, summer. It's very green. It's very lush. This, the thing about this is that Maggie took photos like that. So like, and then uh, like a Rorschach, she mirrored the image on the other side. And the effect is really special. There's lots of faces, like spirits of the trees that you can feel, but there's also these really wonderful keywords. So here we have imagination. I love how powerful these feel. This is sovereignty, roam, depth. wounds freedom i mean they're just really ritual these are really really unique and i they literally feel like a walk in the woods um but something way more alive and magical than that it was just a really unique idea and i'm so pleased to have this in my hands i have considered picking up the other edition but these are very pricey to get into Canada, so I will probably just stick with this one. In reality, the uh, original edition has uh, a different, slightly different shape to it, I believe. A little bit taller and narrower, I think, and has a lot more of that sort of wintry, more sparse winter and fall feeling. Oh, I love this action card so much. I don't know how you don't see faces. In, like, do you see the face? Like, it's just incredible. It's just incredible. I can only imagine how many photos she took to get this effect. But this is such a, a beautiful, beautiful deck. So if you're interested, um, I believe she does, like I said, planned reprints or um, pre-orders for these. And she sort of gets a, a head count up front, gets pre-orders uh, set up or at least pre-commitments up front. And then she orders the decks and then ships them out. It was a pretty, I feel like it was a pretty fast turnaround, all things considered. But I believe she does continue to make them. If you want to find out about the pre-order, just make sure you're on her newsletter. Um, I will, as always, have links to everything I'm talking about down below so you can check it out. It comes in a tuck box, but this will have no problem, obviously, fitting into a, a standard Peggy bag. And I probably won't keep it in the tuck box. Uh, the standard feels like a really nice size for this one. I really want to shuffle it. So let me pull out. There's a secret garden card, and there was also a... Oh, no, that was just one of the regular cards. So let me just see what the shuffle feels like. Can I properly okay i can i think barely riffle it but i have like i said pretty strong hands pretty stretchy hands um and larger hands i think if you have small hands that would be a real challenge but it's beautiful it's beautiful and you could definitely like hand over hand it this way it's like a satin a satin cardstock oh it's so lush okay so that is the Tree Whisper Oracle by Maggie Black. For now, it's going to go back in its tuck box because I don't have a bag for it just yet. There we go. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. Anyways, y'all, I had to get the Tarot of the Witch's Garden. There's no way I wasn't going to buy Llewellyn's like first ever linen cardstock deck. Okay, art aside, I was really excited about the cardstock, but it's more, it's about more than that for me. There is a well-known or I think fairly well-known at this point misprint in this deck, which I will show you, but um, this is such a, this is such a beautiful copy. Oh, and on the misprint, Llewellyn, to my knowledge, is aware. Oh, this book is like heavy. I have to shove my face in Llewellyn books when I get them. They have the most delicious inky smell. If you, oh, just glorious. Anyway, this deck is uh, by Sasha Graham with the art by Natasha Elinsic, Elinchik, Elinchich. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to say that. Uh, I'm not sure how you say that. I think it's Italian, but I could be wrong. I've already taken these out of their plastic wrap. I'm going to shuffle this on camera because I need to. I need to. And this is another one where I feel like I really am probably going to want to do a walkthrough. But please, again, do let me know if you want the walkthrough. I'll just put it back in order. That's fine. But these are the backings. They're gorgeous. So this feels like it doesn't feel like it has like a core necessarily, but it does have that linen finish, which should in theory make it pretty easy to, yeah, shuffle and slide around. So it will have a nice shuffle. It could be too slippery for some. I love linen. Um, I prefer linen on a cord cardstock, but I well, I just love linen. I mean, I'm a, I'm a sucker for it. But in any case, let's talk about the misprints. So this is such a beautiful deck. 
It's so beautiful. And it makes me want the Green Witch Tarot too, which I probably don't need both, but I kind of want both. Okay, here we go. So here's the misprint. I'm, okay, so I've zoomed in. The issue we have is that Wheel of Fortune is numbered uh, 11, XI, and Justice, which should be 11 in this deck anyways, is numbered uh, X, so number 10. So here's what I've decided I'm going to do. We're going to test this. I think I'm going to take this gold Sharpie to blank out the eye. I don't know if it'll work really well, but we're going to give it a try. Okay. Oh, I was off camera. It's It's got a glaring gold spot now. Let's see if I can bring this down so you can see it. See, it's got that bit of gold around it now. And then I'm going to take this little ultra fine black Sharpie and I'm going to add an eye. So the neat thing about Sharpie is that alcohol will typically clean it up really nicely. Yep, here we go. Especially if your cardstock is already a little glossy, right? So I could technically clean up the X that I did here if I wanted to. Hello, can we focus? I think I'm too close to the camera to focus, but anyway, hopefully you're seeing it well enough. Um, so I'm going to just cover up there. Okay, so I'm gonna try that again. I'm trying to be a little more neat this time. So I'm going to I don't think I need to do much more than that. Actually, I just was a little bit more careful with, oh, I was still off camera. I was a little more careful with my line and I just added a little XI and X. Easy peasy. Now, the reason I personally care about that is because I look at the numbers a lot. In fact, I would venture to say that I probably look at the number before I'll look at the title of a card. It's just, I don't know, it's a habit, I suppose. So I felt like that would just kind of fix it for the deck itself. So that is what the uh, corrected Wheel of Fortune card looks like with the little gold blotches on there. And I might be able to just make them look, I don't think I can make them look any duller, but, and then there is Justice with the little line added to make it an 11. I feel like that's good enough for me. It does not have to be perfect. Will I repurchase this when the reprint is done? Maybe, I might, I might actually, but um, I wanted it now. So impatient me was like, let's just get it done. So there's our wheel and justice. I almost feel like I might, I don't know if I love, the gold is almost much more noticeable. I wonder if there's another way to do this. Hold on, let me just think for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna wipe it off. I just wonder if there's a better way, if I had something a little bit closer to the color but less glittery looking. Because if it wasn't shiny, I think it would blank out much better. So let me just see what I've got here. This cinnamon color might be close. Uh, sandstone might be close. It's probably it from my alcohol markers. Let's just test this and see. Oh, I am knocking things over. Oh no, okay, hold on. Let's do this. Let's just do a little paper test. That's too clear. That's gonna do nothing for me and it's pretty much dried out. Hopefully that's not the case with, oh, and that's way too dark. Um, I forgot that these caps don't really do the color justice. Was there another more yellowy one? Um, we could try daffodil. We can also try gold. Let's just see. Oh, I'm throwing it on the ground. Oh, I'm throwing them all on the ground. Okay, let's try this. Shayla's like under, my dog is like under my table here. Okay, so let's try, that's definitely too orange. Mm. It's almost like a light tan. It's not metallic. Do I have a light tan? Well, that sandstone was probably the closest. Let's see. That's actually pretty close. Let's see what happens if I. Oh, it doesn't cover it up, so that does nothing. I might be stuck with the gold, but I wonder if I dab it. Let's just test and see if I can take some of the shine down if I do this strategically. So let's try this. I'm going to grab my tissue color some and then quickly like rough it up. Oh, hey, that actually might work. That actually might work. Okay, we're gonna try this. I'm gonna be very, very quick here. In fact, I'm tempted to color over, and now we're gonna do it this way. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna try to be really fast. I'm going to color it 
and then quickly wipe it. Oh no, that was too fast. That was too fast on the wiping. I'm blowing on it. And then I dabbed it. Nope, I wiped it right off again. Okay, there's gotta be a way to do this quickly. You know what, I think I might just leave it right there. Just a really fine line. It's still kinda shiny, but I feel like that little bit of shine is way less noticeable than when I had that whole little bunch of shine. I think I'm gonna take it. So I'm gonna dry that. I'm gonna put these alcohol markers away because these were no help. These are all the markers I used to use to edge my, um, my decks with. There, that little adventure aside, put away my Sharpie. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. I think I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm even going to clean up just under, use a little more of my alcohol here. I'm gonna clean up just under very carefully. Q-tip would actually be better for that. Okay, there we go. I think I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave it now. Uh, I'm gonna leave that out to dry just to make sure that it doesn't, I'll put it off to the side so I don't mess with it. But anyways, back to the deck. Back to the deck itself. It's really, really, really beautiful. I love this moon card so much. It's gorgeous. Love the sun with the twins. This card here reminds me of the, oh, what is that? 90s fantasy deck that Sarah Sunset Bowtero loves. I had it for a bit. I forget the name of it. This card reminds me of that deck. But I want to shuffle this without the 10 in it. Um, but just look at this. Oh my gosh. This is so pretty. It's so pretty. Look at the Seven of Cups. Oh my gosh. It's gorgeous. Oh, let's check the Nine of Cups because I think this was one I really liked. Well, that's Swords. Ah, there we go. I love this. It's not just a dude with a bunch of wine. I think Sasha did an incredible job with this. And the art is, of course, just a stunning, a stunning fit for the theme of the deck, for sure. Oh, uh, maybe I don't need the Green Witch Tarot. This is just so beautiful. It's all the magic and all the witchiness, I feel like. Look at this Queen of Pentacles. Isn't she beautiful? Oh. Yeah, I really like this. Okay, so let's shuffle it and see what I think of the cardstock, because that's what we're really here to find out. Oh, yes. Now, I've always loved the way that uh, Llewellyn decks have shuffled. They're flexible, they're bendy. They might get a little bit of a bow over time, but they just, they're so comfy to shuffle. This might be, this might become a new favorite. This is such a luscious shuffle. Now, I don't think this is like black core cardstock or the most expensive casino card quality or anything like that. But the finish, the whole purpose of a linen finish, if you didn't know, which is that waffly texture you can see here on the cards, the whole purpose of that is to create tiny little air pockets so that when you shuffle, things don't clump up. It just glides beautifully. And this definitely glides. And there's something about linen that sort of, it almost like, I don't know if it's the way that I shuffle changes. You can see there's some gapping happening here. I don't know what's causing that. I think that's gonna work itself out as I shuffle, but we'll see. Are you here to just watch me shuffle for like a while? Because I feel like that's all I want to do right now. Um, anyways, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I forgot. I forgot what I was saying. I'm distracted by my own shuffling. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. There's a little bit of obvious um, paper is paper, right? It reacts to humidity. It reacts to being in its box. But the finish on this will make the shuffle really nice. It'll also make it so that when you fan the cards out, which I'll show, that they'll fan really nicely. Anyways, uh, I think earlier I was starting to say that I'm pretty sure that Llewellyn is aware of the misprint issue with the Justice and the Wheel. Yeah, it fans beautifully. I'm pretty sure they're aware of that and will be correcting that on a future print. So only the first edition will have that issue. But I just, I didn't want to wait. I wanted to play. I wanted to play with it. And I feel like this is such a lovely, like, summery deck, too. Oh, it's so pretty so pretty i'm so glad so this is one that i would throw in one of peggy's small bags so her small bag is perfect for these like standard sized like llewellyn decks it's literally look at that i'm not going to put it in this bag but like it's the perfect like comfy cozy fit but it doesn't have too much wiggle yeah so i'll put that one in a small peggy bag 
I love these backing so much. Oh, I love this. I love this a lot. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm really excited. <laughs> this is actually holding my multidimensional Davis right now. Or day was, I don't know how you're supposed to say that anymore. I don't know. Somebody tell me down below. How am I supposed to say day was or day was? Oh, this is the other thing in the guidebook. Okay, so it's got your regular card descriptions, right? Which is really lovely and it's very, um, it's a little bit narrative in the beginning and then it tells you what the card means, of course, which is lovely. Also, it smells so good. But in the back, after you get past the quartz, you get harvesting magic. So there's a section that helps you to do some basic mag work, magic with your cards. So there's some spell casting steps and then some instructions, some spreads, but you get a spread and then you get a spell for love, for romantic love, um, a, spread, a couple of spreads and one for uh, the home of your dreams, a couple of spreads, a fairy godmother spell, a couple of spreads, a sound night sleep spell. So it really kind of introduces you to the idea of using tarot for magic, which is really exciting. I just think this is lovely. I haven't looked at the introduction much yet, but I'm just really excited to dip into this. This book has a nice heavy quality feel. I don't know. I'm excited. I, that's all I got to say. I think I'm safe to shove my Wheel of Fortune in the deck now. Hopefully. Hopefully it doesn't smear itself on other cards. But yeah, the hand over hand is really lovely. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Okay, let me put this back in the box for now because I don't have a bag secured for it yet. And look at this High Priestess. She's so pretty. So yeah, I think the deck has a bit of bowing. I'm not surprised. It's like a basic card, basic card stock that I'm pretty sure is um, just standard with a linen finish. Oh, but still very excited. Yeah, see it doesn't, it, you can always tell it has a little bit of bow when it doesn't, oh, I bashed my camera. You can always tell when it has a little bit of bow when it doesn't want to stay in the, um, in the box. No, maybe the box is just is a touch too shallow. I can't tell because it's doing that even that way. Anyways, there we go. The Witch's Garden. Very excited about it. Okay, I'm going to have to speed this along because I've already been filming for almost an hour. <laughs> I've got a few more decks to show. So I forgot that this one was actually a Dawn Made Me Do It, the Vision of the Muse. She had this one on her little shelf of favorites in her tarot room. And I had to order it. Um, I feel like this might pair really well with um, collage decks, but I also have another deck I think it might pair well. We will see. But I really liked the keywords in this one. It's collage but it's got a lot of flowers. It's like a lot, a lot of flowers. Lots of roses. It's very cosmic feeling. Uh, this is the Vision of the Muse. It's by the same creator who does the Lioness Tarot Oracle or Linus Oracle Tarot, or whatever it's called. I really, really like this, these keywords, though, like a lot, a lot. So we shall see. This is pretty quirky for my taste, but I was really drawn to it, so I went ahead and ordered it. It was out of stock on the creator's site. I found another uh, metaphysical shop that had it on their website and ordered it from them. I don't know what, if any, reprint plans there were. I totally forgot there was a David Bowie card in here. I have no affinity to David Bowie whatsoever. I don't dislike him. I just don't really have any connection. Um, but... There is a guidebook, and the way that the guidebook is written in this is really lovely. Like, the message is really simple, but it's really lovely and supportive. Yeah, I really like that. So, I got this. This is what the backings look like, the Vision of the Muse. And this has also got that um, antique-style gilding on it. Really pretty. This looks a little like a cat face on the back. Does anybody else see that? Is it just me? Somebody tell me you see the cat face on the back. Is that intentional? <laughs> must be right no could just be the way my brain works but really excited to have that that's also a standard size and I got it partly because I knew I had ordered this now listen I know that I have talked myself out of and been talked out of this deck before but it was one of those decks I just could not get out of my mind no matter what I did I kept coming back to it and I'm like you know what Lisa you just need to you just need to buy it so I did the She-Wolf Tarot. Um, I felt like this is one of those decks that if it were to go out of print and I will have never bought it, that I would regret it. And that's why I'm like, you know what? Get off the fence, order it. But oh my gosh, you guys, if you are in Canada, please be aware because I was shocked. When this came in, I got hit with an insanely high customs and duty charge. Like it was over $50 Canadian. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. 
it was brutal. It was brutal. And it, I don't know why it was that high. Like, um, the, the value was marked appropriately on the paperwork. I think it had something to do with it. It shipped UPS and I think UPS just took their cut or something. It was just, in, it was so high. It was so high. I was sad and it was not the creator's fault at all. Um, she did everything appropriately. She did everything correctly. I was just super sad. So just be aware. Um, so now I have to like this because I spent a pretty penny on it. Um, she included a, one of the cards from her astrological Oracle. So this is the grand trying card. I will probably use this as a bookmark. In fact, I'll set it there so I remember to do that. And a little thank you for your order, which was cute. No point in wasting a ton of paper on putting something in there that I'm just going to like throw out, you know. Um, this guidebook is what sold me on the deck, ultimately. Um, I got my hands on this at Dom Michelle's, but I had already, like, every time I saw somebody do a walkthrough, if they opened the guidebook, I like paused and read. And everything I saw by doing that really blew me away. It feels like it has a very empowering um, self-worth vibe to it, a really strong solar plexus feel and that's ultimately what sold me on the deck i do really like the gilding this feels really nice uh and it's about the same color actually you want to do a little test i think this is the same color as the uh heavenly blooms let's just let's just test because i'm curious okay here's the heavenly blooms not oh that's pretty close i don't I don't think it's exact, but it's real close. You can kind of see the differences there if I just hold it still. I don't know what it is about that color, but I really like it. It's like not garish. It's like soft and pretty and I don't know. I like it. I like it. <sighs> so this is a Thoth based deck, but this is one of those decks I plan to just work with and take at face value. And at face value, this has got some really strong energy Every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, you have strong energy. We have a lust card, which I love. Balance instead of justice. Some renamed cards. But I just, there's something about this I really like. And look at the color palette. The whole thing flows. Like if you, um, here, I'll show you what I mean. It's not, it's not sorted out by suit. It's just, it flows. Do you see how it flows? It's like, like a gradient. I don't know why that's so satisfying because it's going to be shuffled up and then I won't care. But... Um, I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited to get to know it. And I thought that this might work really well. I don't know why. With the vision of the muse. Let's just see. This might be a really weird pairing, but like in my mind, I thought they might work well together. Let's just see. I'm just going to put two Oracle on either side. Yeah, I feel like these stand up to each other. It's not perfect, but energetically, they feel like they work really nicely together. Yeah, I'm glad I, I'm glad I got this. This is, I did get it hoping it would pair well with the um, She-Wolf, and I think it's going to. So that makes me happy. So Vision of the Muse, and, uh-oh, what have I done? Ace of Wands, Two of Wands, oh, that's right, okay. Three of Cups. So we're going to go take a look at a couple of important cards. I want to see the Moon card. There's the Moon. Lovely. And then I want to see the Nine of Cups. Did we pass all the Cups? Yeah, seven, eight nine. Ooh, this is pretty. This is pretty. So I'm excited about this. I'm really excited about this. We'll see. I'm committed now. This deck is never leaving me again. It's, it, uh, by the time customs was done, this is, whew, it was a whole thing. So this is, this is never leaving. <laughs> this is never leaving me. I say that now, you know, famous last words, but, um, I'm really excited about both of these. And that brings me to the last tarot splurge in the last uh month and a bit i think it was closer to six weeks because i pre-filmed my last recent deck roundup so this one is like extra long <laughs> but anyways i picked up <sighs> the i am the artist by saki saki i tried and tried this is another one that i really tried to talk myself out of and i just curiosity and excitement over color just got the best of me with this one really nice linen finish box but the cards are not linen so i was like oh give me the linen on the on the cards there's a really nice pamphlet in here and then there's uh, chakra colors and then you have the deck itself which feels like a really nice standard like nothing too thick or chunky like it it feels very classic to me really nice uh, smooth almost waxy feeling cardstock which I like that's a it's like a it's just standard smooth style cardstock that I think is nice so you get a card here that has some quick a quick reference guide to the planets and signs, and then you have a, this blank uh, artist card, which I feel like would make a really great significator card. 
This is another one that I think would be really fun to do a walkthrough of. The art style is very quirky and playful, but lots of bold color choices. I like that we have the astrological information clearly on the cards for the Deccans. I just, there's something about this. The original Saki Saki Tarot I thought was so fun and vibrant, but I could not deal with the headless people. <laughs> so I'm really excited that um, the creator went ahead and did, Monica went ahead and did, oh yeah, that's right, there's these extra cards in the back. These are also really good for significators. You have the Observer, the Visionary, and the Inner Muse. So those are fun. I think I'm going to put all of those on top. But yeah, this is, another, look at all the different border colors. Like, isn't that fun? It's so fun. And I'm sure there's intention there, right? Like um, Monica's really big into color. And I don't think these colors are, these border colors are put here by accident. I don't think any of the color was put here by accident, but it's really interesting to me, all these different shades, right? They're not even like, even when there's purple, it's like different shades of purple in these borders, right? Oh, might as well check the Nine of Cups. Yes. Look it. Yeah, this is exciting to me. Very, very fun. The scenes themselves are very Rider Waite Smith when you just pause and look at them. This one's different though. I love this with circling around the tree and this idea of like community and connection. And this feels like it could be the, the world tree. Yeah, this is exciting. I got the, now the guy, the, this big book is sold separately. So let me talk about that for a second, because I definitely, there's a whole section here on chakra, chakra colors. And then there's this, uh, there's something about these color blocks. These are the chakras. There's something about these black, red, gray. Anyways, there's something about that. I don't know. Um, and then that's the little business card that came with it. I can pull that out. So that's the deck itself, but the book, y'all, yeah, this is like a full on, like full on book. This is not at all skimpy. Like, and there's these neat, like scanned in, like handwritten or hand drawn bits or like notes from Monica. And there's a whole bunch of, of stuff in the back around, let me just show you, playing with symbols, right? So there's some information here around, you know, the four legged, what that could mean, the shoes, the cockroach, the flying gift, the race car. So there's this exploration, hot pot and cookies. There's this stuff in the back and then there's a bunch of spreads. Some interesting information here about chakras, including a chakra color spread. And there was also, I thought, something else in here that I saw besides just card interpretation. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff in the front about this book. The journey of the artist through tarot. Yeah, the color quest code. This is that black gray and yeah gray white pink red darkest red black in your favorite color this is that little chart that was in here this is a whole color quest situation there's some kabbalah reference information here astrological information yeah pretty exciting stuff just a ton of what's going on here and how this deck came to be right the creative process oh yeah and there was a bookmark pull that out and of course monica um signed the book, which is really nice. So that is the Playing With Symbols book for the uh, I Am The Artist Tarot, which is the new version of the Saki Saki. As far as I know, they're very similar, but there's heads on people now and a few other things that set this one apart. All right, y'all, thank you so much for hanging out with me while I went through all of the decks that have come in since the last time I made one of these recent deck roundup videos. Thank you for hanging out with me as always. An extra big thank you goes out to my unicorn fam. Thank you to my supportive, magical, and badass unicorns. Y'all, your support means the world to me. And to all of you who spend the time watching these videos, taking part in these videos, commenting, liking, doing all the things, just being a subscriber, I appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you very much for helping me do more of what I love here in this space. I am eternally grateful. And until the next video, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.